So, a uh, good day to everyone. So, um, for this video lecture, I'm going to talk about another animal. So, tapos na tayo doon sa carabao production. So, uh, dumako naman tayo doon sa goat production. So, first, let's discuss doon sa breeds ng mga goat natin. So, uh, itong parang table na to, it was lifted doon sa Philippine Recommends for um, um, for goat production. So, first breed that we dis we need to discuss is yung Philippine Native Goat. So, itong Philippine Native Goat, I think uh, all of you are familiar to it. I know, I, I am confident na lahat kayo nakakita na ng ganito. So, Philippine Native. So, native na goat natin. Marami dyan. Adot agkaiwarang dira. So, the characteristic of the Philippine Native a uh, goat it is a uh, small stocky and low set na tinatawag so basically maliit lang siya so yun yung um, characteristic ng um, Philippine native goat natin yung uh, small stocky and low set eh, it is uh, when you compare it to other breeds of goat talaga uh, mas maliit talaga yung um, Philippine native natin, Philippine native goat natin. So, yung color and marking niya, nitong native goat natin, uh, it varies. Talagang walang iisa or walang dad, parang dala, dadalawa na color or markings na pwede mong sabihin dito sa native goat natin. So, talagang diverse yung color combination. So, um, yung color and markings nitong... Um, goat natin, yung itong native goat natin nasa red pwedeng red, yung red hindi talaga yung color red na tinatawag ha? so let's clarify it pag red na tinatawag um, more on parang mahogany yung kulay so uh, if na experience nyo nung elementary kayo yung pagbabarnish nung mga ano, mga upuan yung mga kahoy na upuan yung if nagbabarnish kayo ng mga kahoy yung kalalabasan ng varnish pagkatapos yung i-apply parang ganun yung kulay ng red na tinatawag more on mahogany uh, color talaga and then yung white or black pwede rin na combination or a combination of this color so pwede merong um, white na part ng goat then pwede merong black na color or pwedeng red then merong black na ispa spot so ganun may combination so kaya diverse talaga yung co uh, color ng native goats natin then yung approximate mature weight niya yung mature native goat natin so when we say mature it is sexually matured na mga nasa 1 year old na 6 uh, uh, 8 months to 1 year old na so nasa 20 kg lang then, if uh, you are using yung native natin, although it is not recommended as a uh, dairy goat, yung average milk production niya when it is lactating is nasa 0 0.3 kilogram lang ng milk that uh, it can produce per day. Then, yung average lactation niya is nasa 187 days. Yun yung um, Philippine native natin. So, ito yung itsura ng native goat natin. So, as the description implies, uh, medyo ano siya, medyo small, stocky and low set siya. And then, yung color niya, combination ng ito. Ito yung kulay na sinasabi ko ng red. So, this is not parang sinasabi nila na brown. So, this is red, parang mahoga ni color. And then, meron siya nitong mga combination ng white, pwede rin yung white or black pwede yung uh, red or black. So, ganun yung uh, native goat natin. Then, another one is upgrade na tinatawag. So, itong breed na to, um, when we say upgrade, most of it is parang um, nanggaling yung ama or yung father nitong mga upgrades natin is a hybrid uh, most notably yung Anglo-Nubian natin. And then yung mother is yung native. Kaya tinatawag na upgrade kasi upgraded na. May lahi ng parang hybrid yung 
uh, mga upgrades natin. So, yun yung parang popular na Crinocross, yung lalaking Anglo-Nubian doon sa, bab sa babaing uh, native. So, yung karakteristik nitong upgrade, it is taller and bigger than native. So, um, yung color and marking vary in color. And then, itong upgrade na to, uh, mas mabigat when it comes to mature weight. Nasa 30 kilograms. And then, yung average milk production niya um, is 0.7 to 1 kilogram per day. So, mas madami compared doon sa native natin. And then, yung average lacta lactation niya is nasa 215 days. So, mas ma mas uh, parang longer. So, itong um, upgrade na to, parang para rin siyang parang native lang. Kamukha lang ng native. Pero, mas ma matangkad, mas malaki yung pangangatawan kasi nga upgrade na. May lahi na siyang hybrid. Then, it varying color. Ganon din doon sa native goat natin. It can vary from red, white, or black. So, yon Yung upgrade natin. Breed natin is yung um, Anglo-Nobian na tinatawag. So, I hope na familiar rin kayo dito sa Anglo-Nobian na ito because uh, this is one of the most popular breeds, mga hybrid natin. Uh, aside from yung Philippine native at saka upgrade natin, ito yung parang popular choice dito sa Pilipinas kasi it is well adapted dito sa condition, dito sa climate, dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya popular itong Anglo-Nubian. So, yung karakteristik nitong Anglo-Nubian, it, it has a proud and graceful appearance na tinatawag. Talagang um, maganda yung tindig. So, hindi siya yung parang nakayuko. Uh, talagang parang uh, Yun, maganda yung tindig nung uh, uh, breed na to. Then, it has a long, wide, and pendulous ear na tinatawag. Ito yung parang distinguishing characteristic nung uh, Anglo-Nubian. So, uh, kung magdi-distinguish kayo ng, uh, ng ano, makikita nyo na yung uh, Anglo-Nubian, uh, mahaba talaga, tsaka wide yung ears niya. And then, it has itong distinguishing Roman nose characteristic na tinatawag. So, mamaya ipapakita ko sa inyo yung um, papakita ko sa inyo yung parang itsura ng Roman nose na tinatawag. Then, for the color and markings, uh, pwede black, gray, uh, cream, pwede white, uh, white shades of, of tan, reddish brown, fascia, Tapos, mayroon siyang facial stripe as a marking. So, yun. So, it can vary rin doon sa kulay. So, hindi lang iisa yung kulay nitong Anglo-Nubian. So, hindi mo talaga pwede ma-distinguish itong Anglo-Nubian when it comes to the colors. Kasi, um, it varies. So, more on dito ka titingin talaga. Doon sa mukha, doon sa ears, at saka doon sa nose. Then, oh, Approximate mature mature weight nung isang Anglo-Nubian is nasa 75 kg. So, ganun kabigat. So, imagine mo yung native uh, goat natin na nasa 20 kg lang. So, more than times times 3 yung bigat nitong Anglo-Nubian. So, ganun kalaki. Then, yung average milk production nasa 1.5 kg to 2 kg per day. So, medyo marami na rin. So, yung Anglo-Nubian pala, it, also, it, is, it can also be considered as a dairy milk, a dairy uh, goat. So, yung average milk production nasa 1.5 to 2 kilograms per day. And then, yung average lactation is nasa 250 uh, days. So, ito yung mukha ng isang Anglo-Nubian. So, as you can see, talagang malaki siya. Then, it varies in color. So, ito yung parang markings na na-mention. Parang may stripe siya doon sa face. So, dito rin meron, siya, meron parang stripe rin siya. And then, yung distinguishing characteristic na, na tinutukoy ko is itong ears niya. So, as you can see doon sa ears, talagang long and pendulous yung ear. So, yan, ganyan. Talagang 
uh, pwedeng makover yung face ng Anglonobian natin. And then yung Roman nose, ganito yung itsura ng Roman nose. Parang may bridge siya dito. From its nose papunta doon sa nostril niya. Parang may bridge. So ganyan. Ganyan yung Roman nose na tinatawag. So tingnan yung mabuti para ma-distinguish nyo. Basta pag ganito na yung itsura, ganito na yung ears, ganito na yung nose. Then, this is a Anglonobian na. Then, makikita naman dito sa picture, uh, halos hanggang uh, nasa parang baywa, uh, waist na, baywang na nung, uh, ng uh, tao itong ulo nitong Anglonobian. So, ganun kalaki. Then, another one is yung bower na tinatawag. So, itong bower naman, um, it is a meat type with short uh, to medium hair and horns. And yung horns are prominent daw. So, sa bower, makikita mo na talagang meron silang horn. Then, yung bower, it is a meat type. Then, yung color and marking, reddish brown head and neck with white body and legs. So, reddish brown daw yung mukha, yung head, at saka yung neck. And then, the rest of the body, uh, white body. So, yun, white yung kulay. So, yung approximate mature weight niya, nasa 80 kg. So, mas, mabi, mas mabigat compared dun sa Anglonobian natin. And then, yung average meal production niya, 0 0.75 to 1.25 kg per day with a lactation period of 200 days. So, ganito yung itsura ng bower. So, uh, ganito lang dapat yung kulay ng isang um, bower. So, laging tatandaan yan. So, hindi siya nagbabary in color. So, uh, ganito yung parang markings niya. Pwede markings na tawagin. So, yung head niya, brownish, reddish to brownish with a distinct white marking doon sa head niya. Dito sa part na to. So, basta brownish ito. And then, the rest of the body, uh, white na. So, brown brownish, reddish from the neck up to the head. And then, meron kang white stripe dito sa part na to ng head, dito sa forehead. And then, the rest of the body, it is white. Then, na-mention kanina rin na um, horned yung ating talagang prominent yung horn ng ating bower. So, meron siyang horn. So, if nakakita ka ng ganitong itsura ng goat, so, um, um, you, could, you could be able to distinguish it as a bower. So, ito yung distinguishing characteristic. Itong kulay niya talaga. Then, another one, another breed is yung Togenberg na tinatawag now, this Togenberg, it is sturdy, vigorous, and long life. So, long life daw. And then, ears are short and erect or pointed forward or carried forward yung uh, parang ears niya. So, yung ears niya daw, laging tatandaan, short. And then, patayo, erect. And then, pointed forward. So, yun, ganun yung ears niya. Then, yung color and markings. Light found to dark chocolate with distinct white markings. Uh, yung markings na yun, two white stripes down the muzzle, fairly white from the knees, then downward and hind legs. So, yung approximate mature weight niya, nasa 60 kilograms, with an average uh, milk production na 1.7, uh, 1.5 to 1.75 kilograms per day, and a lactation period of 220 days yung average. So, ganito yung ano, um, kulay ng and distinguishing characteristic or itsura ng isang ano, isang Togenberg. So, you have here yung ears niya, patayo na it is forward, paharap, erect, and then paharap yung orientation ng ears. And then, ito yung distinguishing characteristic. Parang may white markings dito sa uh, part na to hanggang dito sa nostril. 
And then, ito yung kulay. Parang dark chocolate na tinatawag. Then, meron ka rin itong white uh, markings dito sa feet niya. Dito sa apat na feet niya. So, yun. If may nakita ka ng ganitong uh, itsura, then it is a Togenberg. So, yun yung mga um, common breeds na pwede nating makita dito sa Pilipinas or yung common breeds ng goat. So, yung mga ibang breeds, I, I've presented it doon sa... Um, 161, sa Ansai 161 so doon sa mga different breeds ng dairy goats so uh, if you want you can go over it again para malaman nyo yung mga iba pang mga dairy goats natin or mga breeds ng goat natin like yung mga alpine goats, yung saanin mga ganun, mga nigerian dwarf, so ito yung mga dairy goats natin so with that let's go doon sa age determination na tinatawag So, sa age determination, eh, it can be determined through, yung age ng animal can be determined through dentition na tinatawag. Yung dentition, ito yung uh, sangipin ng goat. So, yung goat natin eh, have itong 8 front teeth or incisors on the lower jaw, which can be used as an indication kung ilan na yung age nung, ano, nung, um, ng goat natin. So, after 4 years old, the approximate age can be determined by the amount of wear in the front teeth. Yung wear na tinatawag, yung parang wear and turn na tinatawag, yung parang um, hindi na siya makikita mo na hindi na, hindi na bago yung uh, yung ngipin. Meron ng mga parang may may mga sira na, may mga chip tooth na, may mga broken teeth na na tinatawag. So yun yung wear in the front teeth na tinatawag. And then on the basis of dentition, animals are considered mature if they have at least a pair of permanent teeth. So mature na daw yung goat natin if may pair siya ng permanent permanent teeth. May dalawa na siyang teeth that are permanent. So ito yung parang diagram on sa age determination ng ating um, um, ng ating goat so this is by year so when the goat is one year old there uh, mayroon siyang two permanent teeth dito sa part na to that replace yung incisor teeth in the center dito sa center sa gitna ng jaw or sa mouth ng animal Nandito yung permanent teeth, dalawa pair, a pair of permanent teeth. So, pag may nakita ka ng ganito, dalawang mas malaki, dalawang permanent teeth doon sa ngipin nung, uh, nung goat, then you could say that it, it, it is around 1 year old na yon And then, pag nasa 2 year old naman siya, 2 years old na siya, there, is a, uh, there will be a 2 additional permanent teeth. Uh, that appear and a total of 4 permanent teeth or 2 pairs na. So, isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. So, apat na permanent teeth na. So, again, pag tinignan mo yung goat and then nakita mo na may apat na siyang permanent teeth. So, madistinguish mo naman yung, yung teeth na, na permanent at saka yung hindi permanent. So, mas malaki yung mga permanent teeth. So, kung may apat na permanent teeth, then yung... Uh, goat natin, nasa around 2 years old na siya. Then, sa 3 years old naman, yung age nung, nung goat natin, 6 permanent teeth are present. The last 2 being found on the either side of the 2 year old teeth. So, dito, sa part na to. So, bale, 6 uh, na yung permanent teeth. So, pag ganon, uh, 3 years old, nasa around 3 years old na yung age nung uh, goat natin. And then, when the animal is when the animal is 4 years old, full mouth na. Lahat na ng teeth nung animal, it is permanent. So, there is a complete set of 8 permanent teeth na. Pag 4 uh, years old. So, para mas madaling tandaan, 1 uh, year old, so 1 pair of teeth. So, 
pair na tinatawag dalawang teeth na yon kasi pair sila mag 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 pair sila so isa at saka dalawang teeth 2 years old 2 pairs of teeth 3 years old 3 pairs of teeth and then 4 years old 4 pairs of teeth so ganun lang para uh, malaman mo yung age ng animal ma-approximate mo yung age ng animal so, with that, let's go to the breeding ng animal. So, uh, breeding of goats aims at increasing yung existing population inventory. Sa, la sa lahat naman ng animal production, yung one goal of breeding is to increase yung population mo. And then, it also improves herd performance by optimizing their genetic potential primarily for important economic traits. Kasi sa breeding na tinatawag, you make use of certain uh, breeds, uh, yung mga magaganda yung breeds, para ma-increase mo yung performance ng uh, magiging parang offspring mo. Uh, so, uh, yun yung parang purpose rin ng isang purpose ng breeding. And then, uh, breeding increases also yung production ng chevon or yung uh, meat ng goat. And then yung milk, uh, then appropriate breeding schemes should be implemented and supported by proper management and nutrition. So, kailangan uh, in order for breeding to parang reach the goal of increasing yung meat production at saka milk production ng goat, kailangan rin sabayan mo rin ito ng magandang management, particularly on nutrition. Kasi... Kahit naman na maganda yung breeding mo, kahit naman maganda yung breed ng mga offspring mo, kung yung management practices na ginagawa mo at saka yung nutrition niya is inefficient, inadequate, then wala rin mangyayari. So, breeding, uh, yun yung ginagawa. It increases the production of uh, yung production capacity at saka yung population ng um, goats natin. So, sa breeding, kailangan natin malaman yung mga reproductive phenomenon na nangyayari sa goat natin para naman ma-utilize natin ng maayos yung pag-breed natin. So, uh, among the native goats, yung sexual maturity can be observed as early as 5 months. So, more on talaga yung parang sexual maturity, it is around 7 to 8 months, pero for um, native goats uh, as early as 5 months so I guess you could say that it is an advantage for native goats so where onset of first estros among windings occurs while yung purebred stocks natin manifest puberty when they are na yun, nasa 6 to 7 months old pala yung mga hybrids natin so yun so, sa native goats, laging tatandaan, as early as 5 months, uh, sexually matured na. For the other breeds, nasa 6 uh, to 7, 7 to 8 months, mga ganun. Then, as the, at this early stage, breeding should not be practiced as this can cause stunted growth and does not tend to produce weak and lighter kids. And does tend to produce weak and lighter kids. So, um... Kung masyado talagang maaga yung pag-breed, lalong-lalo na at early stage ng sexual maturity, um, yun, hindi pa kaya nung body, nung doe natin, nung uh, female goat natin, uh, yung burden ng pregnancy. So, yung mangyayari is it will result to stunted growth nung offspring mo kasi hin, uh, most probably hindi na na kayanan ng nanay hindi na utilize ng maayos ng mga nutrients na binibigay and then yun pag early pregnancy talaga it can produce lighter and weak kids na yung mga baby goats natin and this can lead to mortality so it is not advisable at na pag nasa 5 months 6 to 7 months old na yung um Goat, kahit sabihin pa na sexually matured, is nasa early stage pa siya ng maturity, ng sexual maturity. At this stage talaga, hindi pa recommended na mag-ano ka ng, um, ng mag-breed mag ka. And then, uh, 
though in heat will show signs such as bleeding na tinatawag itong bleeding na to yung uh, parang nag-iingay na ano na kambing so yun pag nag-iingay yung kambing that is called bleeding so it can be a sign of heat and then there's also reddening yung mga classic signs of heat yung reddening of the vulva and then vaginal discharge of mucus then accompanied by restlessness, frequent urination, tail wagging, and then mounting of other goats regardless of sex or allowing other goats to mount, mount her. So, yun yung mga signs ng heat na uh, dapat nating tignan, dapat ma-observe ng isang farm worker para malaman natin kung uh, pwede na bang ibreed yung goat natin. So, the sure sign, the surest sign of estrus is when the doe allows the buck to mount her, also known as standing heat. So, ayun, uh, tulad ng ibang animal like yung, for example, yung swine natin, sa goat rin, if uh, yung buck, yung lalaking kambing natin, uh, sinakyan yung uh, doe, then, yung doe hindi nag-react, hindi gumalaw, basta nandun lang, nag-stand still siya, lang siya habang sinasakyan yung back. Then, that is called standing heat. So, this is the surest sign na yung back natin, ay yung doe natin is ready for breeding na. Kasi during standing heat, dito yung pinakamataas yung level of estrogen dun sa body ng animal. So, yon pwede na siyang i-breed. Dito sa part, uh, dito if sa time na to, if it, uh, yung goat exhibit uh, yung standing heat. So, yun. Um, with that, ito yung mga some reproductive parameters sa goat. So, yung estros. So, I hope alam nyo kung ano yung estros. Yung estros natin, it will uh, period of heat to. So, nasa 16 to 50 hours. Then, yung estrus cycle, it average around 21 days. So, magkaiba yung estrus mag, uh, dun sa estrus cycle. Dun sa estrus na walang O, yun yung period dun sa estrus cycle na um, where the animal is in heat, where the animal is sexually receptive, which is around 16 to 50 hours. Yung namang estrus na may O, estrus cycle na tinatawag, Ito yung kabuo, kabuoan nung parang sa estrus cycle kasi nandito yung estrus, uh, diestrus, mga ganun. So, um, yung estrus cycle, it average around 21 days. Well, or it can be early as 18 days or it can be late as 24 days. Basta, uh, yung estrus cycle, um, ito yung parang um uh, parang binibilang ng mga farm workers. So uh, on average after 21 days uh, pag na breed mo ngayon, di ba? Na breed mo ngayon yung goat. After 21 days if it exhibit ulit yung sign of estrus ito, if nag-exhibit ulit nitong uh, sign of estrus, then hindi nakunan yung goat. Pero, if after 21 days, eh, natignan mo na parang hindi na siya nag i hit and then nakita mo na parang mayroon siyang early signs of pregnancy, then most probably is uh, pregnant yung goat. So, yun. Uh, binibilang yung estrus cycle with an average of 21 days. Ganun na rin sa baboy. 21 days rin. Then, yung ovulation, 33 hours after the beginning of estrus. So, doon sa estrus na makikita naman, signs of heat. So, uh, 33 hours after noon, doon na pwede na uh, ovulation occur. So, sa ovulation, I hope alam nyo, dito yung parang um, magre-release ng egg cell, ng ovum, ova yung female, para ma-fertilize ng sperm cell. Then, gestation length, nasa 147 to 155 days with an average of 150. So, yun. Uh, medyo mas, uh, mas marami konti yung days, yung um, hintayin mo compared dun sa mga swine natin.
So, 150 days yung gestation. So, when we say gestation, dito yung um, parang pregnancy period kung saan nagde-develop yung embryo doon sa um, so, doon sa body nung um, nanay. Then, yung kidding interval for pure breed nasa 240 days and then yung sa native is nasa 210 to 260 days. So, um, in breeding, kaakibat nito yung selection na tinatawag. So, selection is the method used by breeders and animal raisers to make long-term genetic change. So, ginagawa nila, nagseselect sila nung gusto nila yung naaayon doon sa production practice nung farm nila. So, kung like for example, kung it is a dairy farm, then yung kukunin mo is yung maganda yung male production, maganda yung uh, pangangatawan, maganda yung other, mga ganun. If it's meat type naman, piliin mo yung maganda yung ADG, maganda yung growth rate, maganda yung body disposition, maganda yung pangangatawan. So, yun. If nagpili ka nito, and then ito yung bilinid mo over time, then... Um, Uh, uh, on a parang long term period then may changes talaga na magaganap doon sa genes nung stock mo, nung mga population mo kasi nagselect ka ng mga breeds that are na maganda doon sa production practices mo then selection all is also the process that determines which individual animals become parents how many offspring they produce and how long they remain in the breeding population so yun yung selection process na tinatabag uh, dinedetermine, sineselect kung ano yung um, female goat, male goat na pwedeng i-breed pwedeng maging parents And then, sineselect rin kung how many offspring it, it can produce. And then, uh, selection also determines kung ilang taon siya uh, magiging breeder. So, yun. Or ilang taon siya uh, will remain in the breeding population. So, in selection, uh, there what we call as heritability estimate na tinatawag. which is a useful determine, uh, determining a uh, useful in determining the relative progress made in selection to improve various traits so uh, sa heritability it is the proportion of gain made in selection of parents that is passed on to the offspring therefore traits from which the greatest progress can be made should get priority attention in selection so basta yung heritability estimate ito yung mga traits Kung ilang percentage nung trait nung mga parents yung pwedeng maipasa doon sa offspring mo. And then yung marami, yung maganda yung mga traits then ito, at saka maganda yung heritability estimate yung percentage. Then ito yung pagtotoonan mo ng pansin. So ito yung parang heritability is estimate for goats. So... We have here yung mga traits. So, tignan natin. So, sa birth weight, uh, in kilogram, kung ano yung birth weight ng nanay at saka yung tatay or yung tatay, 14%, uh, 14% lang yung chances or yung na ma-inherit ng offspring yung birth weight. So, for sa 90-day weight naman, 40%. Then, dun sa post-winning average daily gain, kung maganda yung post-winning average daily gain nung, uh, uh, nung parents, yung heritability estimate, yung parang chances is 0.05% lang or nasa 0.5% lang or 5% lang pala yung uh, heritability estimate, yung chance na maipapasa yung post-winning ADG. Then, ito, milking time, 0.67, 67%. Yung adult weight, 39%. So, yun, ito yung mga 
Itong mga traits na to, ito yung parang pinagtutuunan ng pansin ng mga breeders. Since this is yung parang traits na kailangan nila when it comes to meat and male production, like for example, itong post-winning ADG, itong winning weight, adult weight, uh, weight at 7 months. So, kailangan ito sa meat production. So, this implies na maganda yung growth rate ng animal if maganda itong mga to. So, ito yung tinitignan kung ilan yung heritability estimate. Pag naman nasa milk production ka, then milk yield per lactation, yung titignan mo na trait at saka yung protein yield ng milk mo. So, ito uh, nasa mga 6, 36 to 60%. Pwede mamana yung milk yield per lactation ng mga parents. Doon sa protein yield ng milk, nasa 47%. Yung pe, uh, pwede mong mamana itong protein yield uh, ng milk mo doon sa parents mo. So, yun. Ito yung mga traits na tinitignan nila at ito yung heritability estimate or na or yung percentage na lang na pwede mong maipasa doon sa offspring. And it is always recommended to use a genetically superior back source from reputable racers, preferably those with pedigree. So, yun, almost lahat naman, hindi lang sa goat production. Uh, you need to use or you need to utilize a genetically superior na male. Uh, it's either buck, pwedeng ram, or bull. Basta it is genetically superior in a sense na maganda yung uh, genes niya. So, kung yung tinitignan mo sa isang male na breeder is yung maganda yung ADG, maganda yung growth rate, uh, maganda yung pangangatawan, then kailangan ganun yung iseselect mo, genetically superior. So, yung itong mga to, uh, they are usually sourced out or purchased through mga, mga, ano, yung mga respected na breeders natin or mga racers natin. Doon mo sila makukuha. And then, preferably those with pedigree, dapat uh, malalaman mo rin kung sino yung nanay, sino yung tatay. Kasi doon mo ma-judge kung maganda nga ba yung genes nitong pipiliin mong back. So, yun. Then, follow a good uh, selective breeding program by using traits appropriate for your selection criteria. So, mate the selected dose to the best box and then save replacement only from the selected group. So, uh, sa isang, sa pag-breed talaga, kailangan nyo follow a breeding program. So, sa breeding program mo, sa, uh, dapat naka-indicate doon kung paano... Uh, yung parang appropriate na selection criteria that is uh, best suited for yung mga traits na tinitignan mo or hinahanap mo. And then you mate the selected dose to the best box. So given na yun, common sense na yun. So kailangan na yung mga sinelect mo, i-mate mo doon sa pinakamaganda yung genes. Then uh, you save yung mga replacement only from the selected group. So, um, let's go naman doon sa breeding practices for those. So, first, you need to consider the age and weight of the doe when it is bred for the first time. So, kailangan na sexually matured siya. And then, a doe may be bred for the first time when she is about 8 months old. So, yun. Doon ka magbe-bred. Pwede. Then, well-grown in good health and weighs not less than 15 kilograms for native and then 20 kilograms for yung mga crossbred natin. So, kailangan minimum uh, 15 kilograms for native, then 20 kilograms for crossbred, and then yung age nila nasa 8 months of age, doon ka lang magbebred, mag-practice uh, ng breeding na tinatawag. So, uh, two services are recommended for maiden dose, although one service can make a doe pregnant as goats are generally prolific. So, it is recommended that you service, service, when we say service, you breed yung doe two times para um, ma-make sure, ma-100% sure mo na um, 
ano na magiging pregnant, makakakuha talaga, ma-fertilize talaga yung egg cell. Pero um uh, pwede rin if resources are not available and time is limited, then uh, one mating, one service service is enough for a doe. Bakit? Kasi they are generally prolific meaning uh, madali silang uh, magkaanak. So yon. So when hand mating is practiced, is being practiced, breed the doe upon observation of heat and repeat 12 hours after. So yon yung ginagawa sa hand mating. So when we say hand mating, uh, natural lang, walang artificial insemination na nagaganap. So in hand mating, um, at the moment na na-observe mo na in heat na yung ba, yung goat. Uh, nag-exhibit na ng signs of heat yung standing heat na na-mention ko kanina then i-breed mo na yon then after 12 hours then i-breed mo ulit i-hand mating mo ulit so yun yung uh, practice that you can employ then those with estrous period lasting for 3 days may be uh, bred on the third day so yun since medyo mahaba yung estrous uh, period nung ano nung goat if it lasts for 3 days then you could uh, breed it on the third day then the best result is obtained when a maiden doe is bred on her second cycle after 8 months so yun um, talagang sure ball um, mag maganda na yung result so in breeding yung kailangan natin yung result na tinitignan natin is makakako uh, magiging pregnant yung doe so uh, magiging pregnant yung doe, uh, higher chance uh, when it is bred on her second cycle after 8 months. So yun. Those can be returned to the herd after breeding and given no special care for some weeks. Pero if in poor condition, ha uh, however, those may need some attention to let them gain good flesh. Uh, but they should never be grown obese at feeding time. So, after breeding, pwede mo nang ibalik ulit doon sa herd yung goat. Given na maganda yung pangangatawan, maganda yung um, body scoring, body condition scoring niya, then wala siyang sakit, then pwede mo siyang i, um, ibalik doon sa herd. Pero if, if it's in poor condition, medyo malnourished siya, medyo mal, hindi maganda yung pangangatawan, then... Yung mga does natin, yung mga babaeng kambing natin na na-breed, na uh, kailangan ng special attention. So, kailangan na uh, you provide him enough na nutrition para uh, tumaba ulit. Pero, uh, kailangan rin mag-ingat uh, para hindi naman maging obese yung uh, kambing natin. Kasi if na-breed mo siya, then nakita mong medyo payat siya then uh, binigyan mo ng binigyan ng pagkain hanggang sa naging obese na siya eh hindi mo pala alam pregnant na yung animal or hindi mo inexpect na naging pregnant then obese na siya o during yung um, pregnancy uh, maaaring maging obese siya at feeding time which can parang um Yung pagiging obese kasi it can be a uh, parang obstruction uh, during ano during parturition during kidding kasi kung mataba ka mas mahirap mong mailuwa mas mahirap mailuwa nung nung kambing yung um, anak niya so yun kailangan na caution is required pa rin then, if the does return to heat in about 21 days, they should be rebred. So, yun. Uh, yun yung parang period, 21 days. If nakita mo na nag-in-heat in ulit yung kambing, meaning, hindi siya uns unsuccessful yung breeding mo. Hindi siya nabuntis. So, kailangan na i-breed mo ulit. I-mate mo ulit. Then, failure of the dose to conceive after breeding with proven duck for two cycles can be a good reason for culling them from the herd. So, um, in a situation wherein uh, maganda yung buck mo, binili mo, sinelect mo, maganda yung buck, maganda yung gene. Now, minate mo siya doon sa 
domo doon sa babaeng kambing. Now, nung nag-mate na sila, uh, naghintay ka ng 21 days, nag-exhibit ulit siya ng heat. Then, okay, baka hindi lang na nakuhanan. So, nag, uh, minate mo ulit. Uh, minate mo ulit for the second time. And then, naghintay ka ulit. Uh, after 21 days, nag-inhit ulit. So, meaning, hindi siya uh, nakuhanan, hindi siya naging pregnant. Uh, two times na. So, pag ganun yung situation, um, yung domo, hindi na siya ganun ka pro prolific, hindi na siya ganun rep, uh, productive when it comes to yung uh, pag, uh, pa, sa breeding. So, yung gagawin mo, yung kaling na. Tatanggalin mo na siya sa herd. So, pwedeng i-market mo na siya, pwedeng i-slaughter mo na siya. Then, uh, yung mga causes of reproductive failure, kung bakit hindi nabubuntis yung mga do natin, uh, pwede nandun sa back. Pwede infertile yung sperm ng back. So, kailangan mahalaga talaga na yung kukunin mong uh, breeder back, yung lalaki, is uh, maganda naman yung um, um, reproductive capacity niya. Maganda naman yung sperm niya, muti, yung sperm motility niya, yung... Um, amount of sperm that it ejaculated, mga ganun. So, kailangan na uh, tignan mo rin. So, pwede yung infertile sperm, hin uh, hindi pala nakakabuntis yung sperm nung back, infertile pala. So, that's one of the causes of reproductive failure. Another one is abnormal egg or ovum. Doon naman sa babae, baka naman may abnormalities doon sa egg cell, doon sa ovum niya. So, this may cause reproductive failure rin. And then, uh, reproductive diseases such as brucelliosis and vibrosis, this will hinder or prevent the, um, um, the dough uh, in conceiving. So, kailangan make sure na when breeding, uh, the dough as well as the buck are free from reproductive diseases. As well as generally, DCO, any diseases, dapat uh, wala silang sakit pag nagbibid ka. And then, another one is hormone malfunction such as retained yellow body or corpus lutea na tinatawag. Then, another one is obesity, obesity of the dough. So, yung kung medyo mataba yung dough mo, it may prevent conception or it may cause the fertilized egg to be aborted. So, yun. Uh, kaya prevent or hinder ma maaring uh, kung obese yung ano during breeding uh, it may hinder talaga yung yung conception and then another one is very hot weather so there are studies uh, correlating yung uh, heat stress kung medyo kasi kung uh, mataas yung temperature to the point na talagang hindi na kaya nung kambing, uh, it will exhibit heat stress na tinatawag. Now, there are studies na mire-relate na yung reproductive capacity ng mga ruminants, uh, it decreases uh, during heat stress. Kaya, this may, this may cause reproductive failure. Another one is malnutrition or low intake of dietary protein, energy, phosphorus, and vitamin A. So, given na yan, kailangan uh, properly uh, uh, yung kambing dapat uh, uh, nabibigyan ng sapat na nutrition. Especially during breeding na rin. Then, normal fetus may be aborted owing to the female being injured by other animals or being bumped in a narrow pore opening. So, this is more on a like physical aspect. Kasi, kahit na nag-conceive na or uh, naging pregnant na yung dough mo, then may injury na ganap which may uh, cause abortion. So, kailangan rin na kahit nag naging pregnant na, mag-ingat pa rin. Uh, tignan mo pa rin yung uh, kambing, yung babaeng kambing na buntis. Kasi baka... Uh, it will result to injury. Baka may injury na naganap. Then, infection of the genital tract. Uh, this may result to reproductive failure. So, 
mga bacterial infection, this can prevent yung uh, successful breeding. Then, um, uh, on continuation on the breeding practices for doe, you can keep an accurate record of the breeding date to determine the approximate date of feeding. So, kailangan na rin na nagre-record ka pa ulit-ulit na lang uh, almost all animal production kailangan na may record book ka kung kailan sila nanganak, kailan mo brinid, mga ganun. Para alam mo, para may, parang yung record kasi, this will act as a guide para alam mo yung mga management practices na gagawin mo. Then, with the record, uh, it will also give the give the care caretaker an opportun opportunity to make preparations for the safe feeding and care of the doe and her kids. So, sa breeding practices naman for bucks, yung a buck should be allowed to serve those for the first time when he is 8 months old. Tulad na rin doon sa doe, uh, dapat sexually mature na. So, 8 months old tala. 8 months talaga yung recommended na parang earliest age ng goat natin, either doe or buck na pwedeng i-breed. So, the buck should not serve more than 20 does before it is 1 year old. But after that, the number of services may be increased gradually. So, tignan mo rin, hindi naman yung papagurin mo kaagad yung um, buck, eh, bag baguhan pa lang. So, it is recommended na nasa 20, not more than 20 pa lang na dose yung isa-serve niya. Yung i-make niya during yung 8 month to 1 year old na period niya. So, after 1 year old, then pwede mo nang i-increase yung number of uh, dose that are that uh, the buck will make. Then, in a controlled mating or hen mating, it is also not advisable to use a mature buck to more than 4 uh, services weekly. So, yun, kung medyo matanda na yung buck mo, it is not advisable to um, mate it with a doe uh, 4 times a week. Uh, yes, 4 times a week. So, yun. Yung maximum lang is for maapat na beses lang kada linggo. Yung pag mate Then, in unrestricted breeding naman, the breeding load should be one buck for every 25 dose or less depending on the size, the terrain, and vegetation of the pasture. So, yun, uh, one is to 25. One buck is to 25 dough yung ratio pag unrestricted breeding. Unrestricted breeding, nakikihalubilo yung buck doon sa dough herd. So, kung magmemate siya, then magmemate na lang siya. So, hindi siya controlled. Walang parang intervention nung uh, man, nung nag-aalaga. Then, it is often difficult for a young buck to breed a large doe as he cannot mount high enough to service. So, kailangan rin tignan mo rin yung size ng buck mo or o oh, yung buck. Baka naman hindi niya abot yung uh, vaginal area yung uh, sa vulva nung animal, nung doe. So, yun. Unsuccessful breeding pa rin yung magaganap pag ganun. Then, standing the doe in a shallow pit or on a breeding crate will materially help the buck. So, pag ganun, pag wala ka na talagang option, mas maliit yung buck mo kaysa sa doe mo. Which is, I, uh, I think, hindi naman ganun common kasi generally mas malaki talaga yung back kaysa sa dough. Pero pag ganun yung situation na mas maliit yung back kaysa sa dough, pwede kang maghukay ng parang pit na agkali ka, tiabot, na umanay DJ uh, dough. Tat no ka jay, no ipan mo jay dough, uh, ag parehas dati hype ka DJ backen. So, yun. Uh, pwede nang mag uh, meet uh, pwede na, maaabot na nung buck yung doe so in general never allow bucks to run with the herd unless herding is part of the management practices uh, this is to prevent some of the doe links from being bred too young so yun 
kailangan na talaga na recommend din na i-separate mo yung back mo doon sa herd ng mga dose mo at saka yung mga dowlings. Yung dowlings yun yung mga uh, hindi pa sexually matured na dose, yung hindi pa sexually matured na babaeng kambing. So, ang idea nito is para ma-prevent yung uh, unsolicited na mating. Baka naman hindi mo nakikita eh, nabibid na pala. Minate na pala nung back mo, yung doling mo, eh, hindi pa sexually matured. So, this maaring uh, ikamatay pa nung, ano, nung doling mo. Then, the box may be kept as long as uh, they are productive. Provided they are not allowed to breed their own daughters. So, kailangan, pwedeng um, i-keep mo yung back mo, yung breeder back mo, uh, to the point na productive pa rin sila. Pero pag nakita mo na na ang productive na sila, hindi na siya nakakapag-fertilize, uh, nakakapag-mate ng maayos, then doon mo lang siya ikakal. Then, dapat... Uh, Uh, dito papasok rin yung mga record book mo. So, kailangan na yung um, breeder back mo, pag iniwasan mo yung inbreeding, hindi mo siya imemate doon sa mga anak niyang babae. Then, do not allow inbreeding in a herd because of its disadvantageous effects on the offspring, such as the expression of undesirable characteristic or phenotype. So, yun. Um, iniwasan natin yung inbreeding. Kasi, ito nga, Uh, it may result to abnormalities ng offspring. So, sayang lang pag may abnormalities yung offspring. So, dapat iwasan natin yung inbreeding. So, ay, we can prevent this by not breeding or hindi natin ibibreed yung male back doon sa daughter niya. Then, exchanging or loaning bucks to other farms will allow other goat racers to avail of the genetic superiority of a buck and can prevent inbreeding na rin. So, yun. Um, pwede mong gawin yun. Mag-exchange kayo, mag-swap kayo, or pwede mong hiramin, pwede kang mag-loan ng buck from other farms that have superior uh, buck gene. Then, yun. This will prevent inbreeding kasi ibang buck na yun. Ibang... Uh, hindi na yun yung breeding back na nasa iyo. So, pwede gawin yun to prevent inbreeding. However, undertake utmost care and precautions so as not to overuse the back and the possible spread of reproductive and other contagious diseases in other herds. So, yun. Pag naglo-loan ka, nag-exchange uh, ka, nagsasap ka ng back from other farms, make sure naman na wala siyang prevailing diseases, mga lalong-lalo na sa reproductive diseases. Baka, baka naman meron siyang reproductive diseases na nakakahawa, eh, hiniram mo, then, uh, dinala mo doon sa farm mo, minate mo doon sa mga dose mo, then, nahawaan pa yung mga uh, herd mo, yung stock mo. So, kailangan na make sure na Uh, it, uh, the buck that uh, that you are loaning, the buck that you are exchanging for, is walang mga contagious disease. Uh, maaring magpla, magpa blood test ka. So, kuwanan mo ng blood, then uh, isubmit mo sa mga governing agencies. Pwede sa DA, mga ganun. Dun. Then, itetest nila kung may disease yung, ano mo, yung hihiramin mo na uh, buck. Then, uh, with that, let's go to doon sa mating skin na tinatawag. So, ito, paulit-ulit lang to. I've discussed this on your ANSI 140. I've discussed this on your ANSI 161. So, first is yung upgrading na tinatawag. So, upgrading or grading up is being used to infuse exotic bloodline of bucks to an existing breed, usually native or unimproved females. So, yun. Sa upgrading, yung laging tatandaan lang, uh, as the name implies upgrading, ina-upgrade mo yung native na goat mo. So, yung mating, mating scheme na ito, generally, yung, uh, yung parang ginagamit is a male breed from a hybrid. Yung hybrid, uh, um, yung most popular is yung male na anglonobian i mo doon sa Philippine native goat mo na female. 
So, yun yung upgrading. Kasi you make use of a hybrid of the genes of a hybrid. Uh, minimate mo doon sa uh, mas inferior na gene no? Uh, Philippine native goat natin in order to uh, produce an offspring that is upgraded na tinatawag na. Kasi meron na siyang genes na hybrid. So, yun yung upgrading. So, different unrelated bucks of the same breed are usually mated to native and their subsequent crossbred female offspring thus increasing the bloodline of exotic from 50 to 75%. So, up um, upgrading, yun. Um, commercial upgrading of native to Anglo-Nobian box produces crossbred with improved potentials for growth rate, body size, and milk yield, thus increasing profitability of the enterprise. So, yun. Yun yung mostly na ginagawa dito sa Pilipinas. Ang Anglo-Nobian box with a Philippine native dough. Yeah, Crinocross uh, para ma-improve yung growth rate, body size, milk yield nung upgraded na offspring. So, theoretically, grading up with a purebred buck will produce kids with the following blood composition. So, uh, let's take for an example, yung purebred buck natin is an Anglo-Nobian and then yung native doe natin is yung Philippine native doe. So, minate mo sila. Now, yung offspring nila will have a purebred buck na 50% yung uh, nanggaling doon sa Anglo-Nobian and then 50% doon sa Philippine native. And then, pag krinos mo yung offspring with each other, krinos mo yung male at saka female na F2 na offspring mo, then yung maproproduce mo na will be a pure uh, purebred back na yung Anglo-Nobian which is, will be 75% and then uh, 25% na native uh, dough na. And then, pag krinos mo ulit itong uh, dalawang ito, itong third uh, filial generation or yung offspring mo sa pangatlo, ito dito sa part na to, krinos mo ulit, then yung kalalabasan na will be 87.5% na Anglo-Nobian and then 12.5% native. So, meaning, um, with these crosses, itong uh, crosses na to, yung kalalabasan na will be uh, an upgraded na goat na may blood composition of 87.5% na Anglo-Nobian and then 12.5% na lang yung native. So, yun yung upgrading na tinatawag. Pero, caution is required in upgrading kasi... Um, pag in-upgrade mo naman ng in-upgrade, mawawala at mawawala yung puro na native natin. So, hindi naman natin gusto yun. Uh, so, caution is required pa rin. Then, although the box that are used to produce the offspring in each generation are different, they should belong to a distinct breed. So, kailangang iisa pa rin. Thus, with continuous upgrading of the female native stock and the female offspring of each succeeding generation, with an improved back, an animal of almost purebred qualities can be developed from the native stock. So, yun yung explanation doon sa pinakita kong diagram. So, another one, aside from upgrading, we have yung pure breeding na tinatawag. So, pure breeding... Is practice when a racer wants to maintain primarily the purity of his stock. So, yun. Uh, pure breeding, pin, uh, brini breed mo yung uh, animal or yung goat of the same breed. That are also pure bred. Uh, walang lahing ibang breed. So, pure breed na Anglo-Nobian, ibibreed mo sa pure breed na Anglo-Nobian. Yun lang yung pure breeding na tinatawag. Ginagawa ito para ma-maintain yung genetics genes ng uh, Anglo-Nobian. Uh, sa example natin. So, this mating scheme is usually observed among nucleus farm which are mandated to produce breeders for the multiplier farms. So, yung nucleus farm na tinatawag dito nang galing lahat ng parang pure breeds. So, um, kailangan talaga record sila na yung i-produce lang nila is pure breeds lang kasi mainly yung goal nila or yung um, o, oh, yung uh, objective nila is to produce mga purebreds na breeders. 
Then another one is yung crossbreeding na tinatawag. So crossbreeding is achieved when bucks of one breed or breed combination are mated to those of another breed or breed combination. So yun, crossbreeding, uh, as, uh, simple explanation, um, you cross yung isang breed ng goat to another breed of goat. So like for example, you cross an Anglo-Nubian male to a Togenberg na female. So yun yung crossbreeding na tinatawag. So this type of mating aims to achieve heterosis or hybrid vigor among the resulting crossbred progeny. So, yun yung parang purpose mo pag bakit ka nagko-crossbred to achieve hetero heterosis or hybrid vigor. Yung hybrid vigor or heterosis, this is when yung um, offspring mo, it is genetically superior to that of the parents. So, mas maganda yung genes kasi uh, naka nakuha, nakakuha ka ng genes from your from uh, your father and then from the mother. So, mas maganda ngayon, genetically superior na ngayon yung offspring mo. So, yun yung heterosis or hybrid vigor na tinatawag. So, um, avoid indiscriminate crossbreeding as this practice can lead to genetic dilution of native or indigenous breeds. Thus, endangering their purity. Kasi nga, dalawang breed na yung cross mo. Kung palagi kang nagkrocross, ng uh, dalawang breed then uh, it will come to a point na uh, nakita mo na pala na wala ka na palang puro na breed, puro crossbred na so um, yun, avoid indiscriminate crossbreedings kailangan uh, nakaplano yan kung ano yung ibibreed mo then alas is crossbreeding program with non-adapted imported breeds should also be discouraged for low input small holder farming system as this practice limits the expression of the optimum genetic potential of the exotic ito itong sentence na to yung sinasabi lang dito is wag kang mag crossbreed ng non-adapted na imported breeds so when we say non-adapted imported breeds kasi ito yung mga nanggaling sa ibang bansa na hindi adapted doon sa dito sa climatic condition dito sa farm condition dito sa Pilipinas. Kung hindi adapted yung imported breed na yon, uh, tapos crinos mo, nag crossbreeding ka, then uh, hindi ma-express or hindi magpapakita yung talagang genetic potential ng uh, imported breed mo. Kasi hindi siya adapted. Meaning, mababa yung productivity niya. So, yun. Uh, it is discouraged to cross between non-adapted imported breeds. Lalong na ano na sa low input small holder, holder farming system kasi hindi naman talaga afford. At saka mahirap talaga yung pag-cross ng mga imported breeds. So, yun. So, those, doon muna mag -e end yung uh, topic natin sa gold production doon sa mating scheme. So, um, I will continue uh, on a on the next video lecture. So, uh, with that, um, please go over it, please listen to it, and thank you. Uh, if you, uh, pag nandito ka pa, then thank you for listening.